Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasala with Audioholics, and today I wanted to do a very basic video for you guys on how to make sure that your system is actually uh, decoding surround sound audio. The reason what prompted me to do this video is I was staying at someone's house over the weekend, and they had a really nice system. They had a 5.1 in-wall system with you know a powered subwoofer, really big Samsung curved TV, and when I went to listen to their stuff, whether we were watching Direct TV or Blu-ray or even uh, Fire TV. Everything was in two-channel stereo, and they had the receiver stuck in ProLogic 2, and they had no clue. They had no clue they weren't listening to 5.1 audio. Now, these folks I was staying with are very technically proficient people. They're actually both degreed engineers, electrical engineers. But it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of degree you have or how savvy you are technically. If you don't do home audio every day and you're not really into the stuff like I am, for example, it's very easy um, to set this stuff up incorrectly or to not take it that extra mile to get everything set up so you're getting the right audio and the right video. It's not just about plugging the cables in and hoping everything works. Um, I'm sure some of you realize this, but a lot of source devices, you have to actually configure them so that they're broadcasting their, their stream in 5.1 or in surround sound as opposed to just two-channel PCM. So what I did was I just put together a, um, a collage of pictures to kind of give you guys some examples. Now, more advanced uh, viewers probably want to skip this video. This is more for the neophyte or just someone that is not sure whether or not their receiver is putting out 5.1 audio. So let me show you what I put together here. We're going to start out with the cables, okay? If you want to do 5.1 audio or above, 5.1 meaning Dolby Digital, Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, and then even Atmos, you really need to do HDMI. HDMI is the only approved uh, digital media between source devices and your receiver that's gonna output HD audio and HD video. So really what I tell people is if you've got a Blu-ray player and you've got a Fire TV and all that stuff, make sure you're running HDMI from each of those source devices into your AV receiver, into each of the unused inputs. You can use um, Toslink. This is fiber optic or Toslink. You can use this on your Fire TV or you could use it on, on some of the DVD players or some of the older source devices, like say even a, a CD player, if you're playing uh, DTS 5.1 CDs, if you're one of the people that still own those. The thing about Toslink, the limitation of Toslink is it will not go beyond Dolby Digital or DTS. So if you wanna do Dolby True HD and you wanna do DTS HD and Dolby Atmos, again, HDMI is your only game in town for that. Definitely don't use standard analog interconnects anymore. This is not acceptable for using for any device that outputs beyond two-channel audio. So if you're running a Blu-ray player and it has two-channel analog outputs, if you connect these two-channel analog outputs into your receiver, you're only going to get two-channel. And then your receiver, if it's in surround sound, it's just going to upmix it with whatever upmixing technology you have on your receiver. So again, guys, it's very important to make sure you're using the right cables. As Scotty would say from Star Trek, the right tools for the right job. So please, guys, make sure you're using HDMI, or if you're using Toslink for Dolby Digital or DTS 5.1, or even you could be using coax. This is a digital output that's on some of your source devices, even your cable TV boxes. So if you do use coax, it's the same thing as if you're using fiber optic. They're very similar in terms of their capability. That is acceptably, acceptable to get 5.1, but again, you're not gonna get Atmos, you're not gonna get Dolby Digital Plus, you're not gonna get lossless um, surround uh, decoding using these two connection methods. Again, you need HDMI, okay? So I think that covers that for cable connections. Let's look at um, some back panels of equipment devices so I can show you a little bit more. So if I wanna zoom in a little bit here, uh, oh, sorry. Here you see you have an optical output. This is on a Fios uh, TV box. You have HDMI, and then you have, I think you have a coax. Actually, this one doesn't have a coax. So again, here are your connections for your cable boxes. This is the DVR box, so this one has a coax as well. Again, these are acceptable for 5.1 audio, but if you want better than 5.1, like for example, I believe Fios is now doing Dolby Digital Plus. I'm not sure if they're doing Atmos yet, but I know Fire TV is doing um, 
Adobe Digital Plus, and they just announced that they're going to be doing Atmos. So you need to use the HDMI. So this is my cable box, for example, that I'm showing you. This is a Fire TV, similar to Apple TV. It's just, this is their Amazon version of it. Again, you've got the optical audio output. You can only do Dolby Digital or DTS 5.1. Can't do Dolby Digital Plus. You need to use the HDMI outputs. If you notice, the latest version of Fire TV doesn't even have a, to a toss link output anymore. It only has HDMI. So that's kind of good because now it's forcing people to make sure that they're actually using the right connection method to get surround sound and to get HD video as well. So if you look at the back of this TV, uh, I wanted to bring up one important point. Um, here are your connection methods. You've got HDMI, all your HDMI inputs here, and you've got Toslink uh, output. Now, the reason why you have a digital output on these TVs is many of these TVs today are what's called smart TVs. That means they have the apps built in. So you could do Netflix, you could do Amazon Prime, you could do all of your different streaming services, kind of like having the Fire TV built into your regular TV. But unless you're using HDMI with ARC capability on your TV and ARC capability on your receiver, you have no way of getting that audio from the TV into your receiver. ARC stands for Audio Return Channel. So if you have a modern receiver and it has an ARC um, input, or an ARC output, I'm sorry, you want to use that ARC output and plug it into the ARC input of your TV, then you're done. Then you just have one cable connection that'll transmit all of the video from your receiver to the TV, and then the TV will transmit that audio, if you're using the apps built into the TV, back to your receiver so you don't have to use another cable to do that. Now, if you don't have ARC, you're more than welcome to use the optical output. You take the optical out of your TV and you plug it into an optical input on one of your inputs on your receiver. And now your smart TV is capable of doing 5.1 uh, decoding or it sends a 5.1 bit stream out to your receiver so your receiver does the decoding. But you're not in the wood, out of the woods yet because you do have to do some configurations on these devices to make sure that they're doing 5.1. So let's start with just the TV itself. When I was over at a guest's house this weekend, I had to actually navigate through their channels uh, using Spanish because the TV was configured for Spanish. And my Spanish is a bit rusty. I haven't taken Spanish since high school. So I did my best and I found out where the TV had the settings. In this case, this was direct TV they were using. I had to go into the setting and, dis and enable audio, Dol Dolby Audio, because without it enabled, everything that was coming out of that box was just two channel PCM. Her, their receiver was taking that two-channel PCM, and now they had it stuck in ProLogic 2, and they were getting simulated surround sound. They weren't getting discrete 5.1. So the first step is, is if you have a Direct TV or you have a FiOS or whatever you're using, whatever satellite provider or cable provider you're using, you got to go into those boxes and make sure you have it set for 5.1 or for Dolby to Audio or whatever it says surround. For example, if you look at FiOS, which is now owned by Frontier, when you go into the setup menus, you go to audio format, it doesn't say 5.1, it just says stereo or surround. You have to go and select uh, surround in order to get surround. Otherwise, again, you'll wind up with two channel audio. Now, here's the Fire TV that I went into, and you gotta go and probably two or three levels down into the setup and get to where it says display and sounds. Then it has Dolby Digital Plus, it has automatic Dolby Digital uh, Plus through HDMI. I think whether you use automatic or HDMI, it's pretty much the same thing. Automatic will just sense whether or not your receiver is capable of doing beyond two channel, and it'll broadcast the 5.1. Otherwise, it'll just give you two channel. But when you get these Fire TVs out of the box, they're not set for 5.1. And I don't believe Apple TV is either. I've not really messed with that, but my experience is almost every source device you get, you have to make sure it's set for 5.1 output or you're getting two channel audio. And a good way to check this is when you go into your receiver menus, I actually didn't want to show you this one yet. I wanted to show you this. Once um, you set up your source, let's say it's Fire TV or a Blu-ray player, um, and you hit play and it's producing audio, there's usually an indicator on your receiver front panel. It shows you the number of speakers that are discrete that are being decoded. So in this case, it's 5.1 here. You got the uh, five speakers in the subwoofer. It's an old Yamaha receiver. It even says Dolby Digital over here. 
there's usually indication there. So that's one way of knowing for sure that you're doing 5.1. The other thing is a lot of receivers have an info button on the remote control. You hit that info button, it'll tell you what your format is. In this case, I'm doing Dolby Digital Plus from Fire TV, sampling rate of 48 kilohertz and 3.2.1. So it's three discrete channels up front, then your two surround channels, and then the 0.1 for the base. Now I know that I'm doing 5.1 surround. So I always like to check that when I start something or it's the first time I use a source and I'm unsure. Now, I, one more I wanted to show you is even in the Oppo Blu-ray player, an Ultra HD Blu-ray player, you have to go into the audio setup. If you have secondary audio enabled, in many cases, you won't get 5.1 surround again because it'll give you that secondary audio option and it'll down convert everything to two channel. So I always turn off my secondary audio output on my uh, Blu-ray players because I never use that. I make sure the HDMI audio format is auto or bitstream. The SPDIF, if you're using, this is the Toslink app, but if you're still using that, you set it for bitstream. And then there you go, then you're doing 5.1. Again, here, this is the Samsung TV that I had to go into, and this is buried in the menus. I had to go into the HDMI input and select bitstream. And then the other thing I have to tell you about TVs, in many cases, when you're, um, when you're doing audio from the output of your TV into your receiver, so you're doing your smart apps, you have to go and disable the sound from your um, speakers on your TV. I found a lot of the uh, TVs, such as the Sony's, for example, if you don't disable the speakers internally to the TV, then the digital output is, is only uh, gonna be broadcasting in two channels. So in most cases, you're not gonna wanna use the TV speakers anyways. I just would recommend you shut them off and always use a receiver. That way you know when you're doing your, your 5.1 audio and you're doing all your streaming and everything, everything's in surround sound. So it's always a good idea, guys, to make sure you check this, check through your receiver. Step one is make sure you have the right cable connections. If you're running old analog two-channel audio outputs through, from these source devices, it's time to replace that and use either HDMI or Toslink. Check your receiver settings, check your Blu-ray settings, check all your source settings. Make sure you're set to bitstream or surround sound. Make sure those outputs are configured to do multi-channel audio. And then go into your receiver and check the info button when you're decoding something. And make sure you're actually decoding 5.1 or better surround and you're not just decoding two-channel up mixed to ProLogic. Because if you do that, if you only do two-channel mixed up to ProLogic, you're missing out on a lot. Not to say that ProLogic 2 is not, is not a good um, sounding experience. It's definitely good for older movies that are only two channel, but there's nothing like discrete surround sound. So anytime you can listen to discrete, discrete meaning each channel has its own information. So you have the left front, center, right front, left surround, right surround, and sometimes the side channels as well. Those are all independent channels and the audio is all separate for those. But the only way you're gonna get that separate audio, the discrete audio, is to make sure that your source devices are sending that bit stream out, and then your receiver is actually decoding it in 5.1 or above surround sound. I know I'm being very repetitive here, but I can't stress this enough because I've been to so many people's homes. They set up these three or $4,000 TVs, they get a nice $500 or $1,000 receiver, they get all the speakers, and they get it all set up, and they're all happy and they're listening to two channel audio and they don't even know it. And it's just, to me, it's tragic. So guys, I hope this video is helpful to whether you're a beginner or you're someone that's a little more intermediate, but you maybe just didn't think about checking all the settings for all your devices. I hope you go and you take a few minutes now after you watch this video and go and make sure everything's set for surround sound and then come back and comment here and tell me what your experiences are. Tell me if you, if you left out any steps you didn't realize and you've been listening to two channel audio all this time. I would definitely love to hear your experience and, tell, and then you tell me how much better your system sounds. And then also I would encourage you to look at some of our other videos where we have calibration tips on how to get all your channels correctly balanced, your speakers delays, the digital delays properly done, and all your bass management setup so you get the best possible sound for your speakers. So guys, I think that covers it for this little video topic I wanted to do. I hope you're all listening and surround next time I talk to you. And guys, until next time, keep listening.